I got some things in that I need for projects coming up soon, so let's check it out. This one is strangely accurately described as switches connectors. So I'm going to assume that's exactly what's in here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> how about that? Oh, stuff is kind of loose. Okay, so board side connectors here and then pins and housings over here. I'll try to actually go get a tray to put these in instead of back in the bag. So it looks like I bought six pin regular vertical as well as right angle two millimeter pitch connectors and the housings and crimp pins to plug into it and a bunch of these tiny surface mount rectangular push buttons. I've ordered other pin configurations so I'll see what comes in. These push buttons are way smaller than the ones I've generally been using so sometimes you just need that extra space savings on a board. So these are much smaller. This is, according to the label, a plastic dial. Oh, slider pot uh, knobs. Yeah, these were stupidly expensive for what they are, but I exhausted all of my options. Maybe I'm not good at searching for good deals anymore but I needed them specifically to fit this motorized slider pot because this is ridiculously large, over 18 millimeters, and I have a few other styles and these go for a lot cheaper. But the problem is, there's no way those will fit. This one has a very small opening. This one's bigger, but still only probably half as big as it needs to be. So this one is the one that hopefully fits. Now I don't want to force it and risk breaking something in the mechanism here, but that's on there anyway and I can always glue it or something. I just need something to make this accessible. So yeah, it's expensive, but I felt I needed to get these. This is not in English, so I can't read it. And there's something in a tube. Some sort of IC surface mount, and I'm going to have to use the magnifier on this. CH340G USB to UART. These are the ones with more pins, so it's not just transmit and receive. It's got all the hardware flow control. DTR, DSR, things like that. Clear to send, request to send. I've also ordered a smaller one. I think it's an 8-pin package where if you just need transmit and receive to go to USB, that will save a lot of board space as well. But I will be needing a USB UART interface very soon. This is one of those packages where it's got two or three labels on top of each other. So the description is probably beneath one of the labels, but I can't tell. And sure, I could probably try to look up the tracking number, but it's probably just as fast to open it and see. Looks like some sort of transistors and capacitors. I'll assume these are all the same, so I'll just take one. Two N, 7000. I think that is an N channel FET, and it may be logic level where I can use it in low voltage projects. So I don't know how many are in here, but that'll do a while. As long as they are genuine and not broken, because this is not very anti-static. Let's see how they look. Tester. Need a battery. Looks like it found an N-channel FET. V-threshold 1.9 volt. I think that's the gate turn-on for this which would make it nicely logic level for 3.3 or 5 volt circuits. At least it didn't test as an NPN. And these appear to be 105, 1 microfarad capacitors. And they look to be poly something or other, polypropylene. So this kind of capacitor material in values around 1 microfarad. I bought this just in case 
I want to do some experimenting with audio circuits where I need a DC block capacitor in line with the audio signal between an input and an output of another stage because these are supposed to be better for audio than something like ceramic or certain electrolytics at least. It may or may not even matter for any of the stuff I'm doing, but it's worth experimenting with and see if I can see any difference on the scope at different frequencies or whatever. See if I can see any distortion being introduced with other kinds of capacitors. Just something to have around and maybe I'll want to try some stuff. And due to part availability and cost, I placed another Mauser order. And this one's going to have all kinds of small parts in many different bags or tubes, so there's no sense really going item by item. Let's just get all this stuff out and take a look at the packing list and see what I've got. First, I have these various ATtiny devices, including a couple of surface mount ATtiny 85s because I've been borrowing them off of all kinds of DigiSpark modules so that I can put them into other projects where I needed a through-hole ATtiny85 and didn't have one. It would be nice if I could return the parts where they belong. And I also have a bunch of ATtiny's from the newer 0 series and 1 series family. And these use a different programming interface, the UPDI, and it seems like they are a lot cheaper than the older ATtiny's and offer more onboard peripherals. So I wanted to start putting these into projects and get used to using them. And I made my choice on what to order based on what's in stock. Because it seems like a lot of chips that I'm going to purchase have like a one year lead time right now. So I just grabbed what I could to put them to work. I got some other miscellaneous parts, voltage regulators, a whole bunch of different op amps. Because again, working with audio stuff. Sometimes a general purpose op amp is just fine, but some are better than others. So I just wanted to diversify my collection, get a couple of these particular ones, see how they work for any little circuits I'm working on. I ordered a variety of capacitors in certain specific values that I need for the PT2399 chip, so I can finally put this chip to use and try to build one of these reverb or delay echo type effect projects. I've had the chips for a long time, but I keep forgetting I need these certain capacitors that I don't tend to generally stock, so hopefully now I can get around to working on that. And these little relays are latching coil relays, 14 millimeters long about nine millimeters wide. So a lot of these could be stuffed on a circuit board side by side. And these are low signal relays, so good for audio. And these are incandescent light bulbs, 6.3 volts. So this belongs in a guitar amplifier where the bulb burned out and I might as well just throw this on an order when I'm ordering a whole bunch of other parts. And this one wasn't my first choice of a part number, but the other one that I would have wanted is not in stock, of course. I bought three of these, so that should get me through anyway, as long as it works. So thanks to Patreon supporters and channel supporters for helping make all this possible. Check back and see what projects I come up with.